Hello there, Project Open Mic audience, and welcome to another Andre's Mic discussion. Obviously, I'm Andre. And this one's going to be a little bit more directly personal, talking more about my more recent history, um, which is fine. Fair warning, you may hear a few pauses now and again. Um, Not like you're going to hear it in the recording. But if you're somebody who's used to audio engineering, you'll probably notice some changes in the sound. Just because I may be pausing to avoid ultra loud noises. um, Which I will attempt to do. Unless I'm in the middle of a major point. And also... For just the off chance that someone who may be getting spoken of in this, I have at least verifiable evidence for a majority of the things that I can say within context. So I'm putting that out there. Because, again, I'm going to be talking about my past. I'm not specifically naming names. Because I don't need to. And I also don't want people to feel interested or inspired to go searching. So that's why. But I do want to talk about my history again recently before my divorce during it a little bit and even some of the stuff that just happened recently after because that's how things are right now and as always I am walking because I do a lot of walking I do a lot of thinking while I walk it's easier to get my thoughts out and I walk long distances for hours (laughs) because I can't that all said I I mean some things honestly and I've said this before in my last marriage I cheated now I didn't know why I was doing it outside of knowing I was unhappy with myself I still hadn't had like a full grasp on what was triggering the thoughts to even go through with it especially when I specifically didn't want to do it now someone hearing that's gonna be like that's that's a cop out because there's no re- no way you do it if you didn't want to do it in some way shape or form While there is truth to that statement, it's limiting the scope of when you think about things. Because I did, in part, want to do it, but it wasn't something I was happy to just go do. And it was more of me trying to put a bandage on a gaping wound. It just never worked. And it wasn't going to work. And honestly, the more I did it, the worse I felt. So, again, while there was a part of me that wanted to do it, it was more like trying to fix something with the wrong tool. Like, you know you need to fix a clock, but you decide to bring a hammer to it. It just doesn't work. And that, that's mostly what it was with me. It was me trying to fix something that I didn't know how to fix. And just say on top of growing up and hearing people say how if you needed therapy, you were weak. And being told that you can't really be emotional as a guy when I was actually very highly emotional as a guy. Um... And on top of that, whatever negativity was coming from my relationship at the time, that not very many people actually knew about. Me, at least from my end. 
some family members knew. But not a whole lot of people really knew outside of my family at the time. And that's because I wasn't one to run and throw my business out because I preferred to deal with it as quietly as possible. Now, I can't say my whole marriage was horrible because it wasn't. But there were definitely some key issues that left me feel, feeling ignored, unwanted, undesired. And it took me a while to recognize those things. And most people would think that you wouldn't normally hear this from a guy. Like, but dudes think this type of stuff too. The only thing is, when we talk about it or we say something about it, we're told to man up, do better, be stronger, again, that we're weak, that we're not capable of things. Like, but you say this, but then people tell guys all the time, you need to be more in, in tune with your emotions, with your mind, but then we'll tell a guy that he has to be stoic and hard and all that. Not allowing for room for the guy to actually be able to release all that negativity that builds up. And that's why when I was in situations where I did go through with <laughs> go through with the damaging of my marriage at least the damaging that I did When I did that, I ended up often with this feeling of being a passenger in my own body. If anybody's seen the movie Get Out, The Sunken Place, that's the best I can describe it from looking at it. It was like being a passenger in my body, watching everything that's going on and screaming an input to myself, but the input didn't work. So if like you're a gamer and your analog sticks have drift, no matter how much you try to reset it, it just still doesn't. Because you're not dealing with the problem causing the drift. That's kind of how it was. And I'm not saying that is a way to excuse what I did. I'm saying that because that's how I felt. That's where my mind was. That's where my brain was. So for all the people that knew of me on YouTube. And the way my personality was. I was honestly <laughs> forcing my personality out. Because I will be frank. I felt very few emotions then. Now it was it was more like me pretending to be myself and trying to be who I was, but it not really fully manifesting itself because I was only putting on the emotions that I knew I should be having. It is an odd way to cope. Because I wanted to feel those things. I wanted to be in that mind space. I wanted to be as happy-go-lucky as I was. I'm more like that now. Because I'm past that point in my life. Where I feel so negative about myself. Which, honestly, that process started before I started my YouTube channel. Um, because of my father passing away like several months before then. But I personally didn't understand it. Now the odd thing is, I didn't get a diagnosis for my depression until I was 31. But I can actually trace it all the way back down to when I was 10 years old. Like when it first started to manifest itself. When my aunt passed away, because I was very very close to my aunt as a little boy. 
Um, so it it stuck at well, I was actually I was twelve. I was twelve. But it was one of those things that really stuck to me. And back then I wouldn't have known what it was. I just did other things to try to remedy the problem. Like I had video games, so they were an escape. But it started to affect my schoolwork. And then I had that problem again, like in middle school, a few years later, where it again affected my schoolwork. But I didn't understand what was going on with me. I just felt down and out. I just never understood what it was. So I would, I'd have flare-ups flare ups and bouts of my depression come up, but I didn't get it. And it wasn't until it was explained to me what it actually was, which I didn't actually find out until 30, when my ex and I went to marriage counseling, couples therapy, and she actually talked about how it felt to her versus just throwing words out from the dictionary definition of what it was. See, that didn't click with me. There are some things where I can read the definition or the technical details of something and I understand it. But there's other things you have to, or at least for me, because I learn different things a variety of different ways. But when it came down to that, I had to actually be told what it felt like. So I could put myself in that place to see if it was similar to how I felt and lo and behold that's what it was so after that is when I got the actual diagnosis of it um, actually a few months after that is when I got the diagnosis because of a whole new doctor that I had for me personally And that's why I got put on antidepressants and found out that they screw with my head in my sleep and I can't take them. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there was a lot with that. But I did a lot of bad things that I wasn't happy with. I wasn't happy with myself for the things I was doing and it just made me feel worse on top of being how I felt. So again, trying to use a bandage to cover up being shot in the heart basically it just didn't work now there were actually things that my wife was doing that I didn't know about like having pretty much a secret relationship with someone and then trying to pass it off as my insecurities like everybody has insecurities but if I tell you directly I would like you to not talk to somebody because of something you did with them behind my back. I would think that you would stop talking to that person because that would be a reasonable request. Because whether or not I, I was right didn't make much of a difference at that point. Because whenever she asked me to cut off someone that I may have done something wrong with behind her back, I did it. Because I knew it was wrong. I knew for me that was wrong. So I wasn't going to cling to the person that I didn't want to be with. Even though, through my process, I still vetted people and got to know them. Versus just having one night stands. I mean, I, they were one night stands. But I got to know them before they became them. <sighs> as horrible as that sounds. <laughs> but I found out that through her basically telling me. I mean, part of me had always known that something extra had happened beyond what I knew. But <clears throat> I didn't try to focus on it. Because I figured 
I don't like when stuff like this is thrown in my face. So I'm not going to do it to her. So, to come to nearing the end of my marriage, because <clears throat> I only found out like a month before we crossed the decade that additional things had happened with her and this person, this guy. And then come to find out another year later that they had been communicating on a semi-regular basis. Even though I asked her years before that to not communicate with him. And that was one of the big problems when we went into therapy that I never got the chance to clarify. Because anytime I said something that she disagreed with or had a flip out about, the therapist kind of just shut me down. Didn't really allow me to speak. But if she was allowed, she was allowed multiple times to interrupt what I was saying, which is something I still have to address that particular person about, that therapist, because I still do have his contact information. But, <sighs> when we got into it in therapy, there was one key statement I had made that he keyed in on, which is what I've already said to you guys, is that even though I did cheat, I didn't want to. It wasn't like, ooh, I feel happy I did this. Or this is great, I can keep doing this with no remorse. I'm just not built that way. I hurt somebody, I feel bad about her. Whether I do it on purpose or not. It's just how I am. So, and that's something she highly lied about in therapy too. And wouldn't go back to therapy or find a new therapist when we moved because I apparently lied in therapy because I got tired of trying to argue my point and just started going with whatever the therapist was saying because at a certain point where you're not allowed to speak, you don't want to speak anymore. Which was the main problem in our marriage in the first place is that if I said something and it was anything to the contrary of what she said, it was a problem or I was invalidating her feelings or her experiences. And I still to this day do not know how, if I'm telling you how I feel about something, and I'm figuring we're communicating what's going on in our heads to each other, we're trying to talk things through, we're trying to work it out. How is it that if I communicate to you how I felt about a situation, that suddenly invalidates how you feel? Because that, that shouldn't. And that was never how I was thinking. But it made me not want to talk. And then I got constant arguments and fights from me not wanting to talk. Because I got tired of having anything I said twisted and turned into something I wasn't saying. Like this me telling my ex-wife that, hey, we need to work on our friendship again. That got a fight. The first response was, well, what do you mean? What, you just want to be friends? And I was like, no, that's not what I said. Those are not the words I used. So it became a thing. Anything I said was taken into a context I never spoke. And that actually still happens to this day. Which makes it hard for me to communicate with my ex-wife. Even though I know I have to. So I can communicate with my kids. Because she's the only way I can contact them. So it is still one of those things. Where I say one thing. In a context... I was never using is applied to what I'm saying. And I thought for the longest time it was me. That it was just straight up me. 
but I talked to so many other people over time, like people that were from the area she's from, and I got wholeheartedly different reactions to the same things I was saying. And, and then it started to be one of those things, and I was like, hold on, well, if that's the case, then maybe it's not fully me. I mean, I know I was part of the problem. Doesn't matter what I say, what I did was still wrong. Doesn't matter. Even though I do know that in the same context of the situation, if our roles were flipped, if my role and her role were flipped, anyone hearing this, especially a woman, would be like, well, you go, girl. You did right. He deserved what he got because of how he did, how he treated you, how he did you. You flip it the other way around, though. I'm scum. I'm dirt. <laughs> like, I've seen those responses from people. Because, sadly enough, she blocked me on social media platforms to hide what she was saying about me. And someone else told me what she was saying. And, honestly, after a certain point, I thought that that would die down. But apparently it hasn't. <clears throat> because, as I recently found out, she is still talking about me. No, she's not using my name. And, potentially, people don't know who I am. So it's not something I'm going to like try to chase after her about. Because it's pointless. And she's doing the same thing she was doing anyway, which was talk to a bunch of other people about me who don't know me. And who aren't now willing to hear anything I have to say because they already got her side of things and in her tale of events, I'm the big bad wolf. My tale of events, we both fucked up. Kind of how I've always said it. We both messed up. Different ways... But we both messed up. Now, that said, I've also been called an abuser. I've been called a narcissist. And it stuck with me because she was somebody who was very important to me once. So, even though I don't care for her opinion... It was something to hear that, especially knowing that she's in the medical profession, because she shouldn't be making those types of diagnoses, because narcissistic personality disorder is a thing, and a narcissist isn't just someone who's selfish. I actually researched what a narcissist is because of that, because I wanted to be 100% sure that the descriptor that was being used didn't have anything to do with me. And the closest I come to potentially having narcissism is that I could potentially have ADHD, which for some people presents the same way as narcissism. Difference is that if you have ADHD, you sometimes miss social cues. And I've realized I do that sometimes. Especially when it's a bunch of new people I am not familiar with, I will miss a social cue completely. Now, I, I know I'm not autistic, because I'm not on that, that spectrum. But ADHD sounds about right for how my brain works. Because I can hyper-focus on something at one point, then completely drop it and hyper-focus on something else. And then there are just some things I have trouble focusing on. No matter how much I try to focus on them, I just can't. And I can come off monotone, sometimes maybe even very deadpan, um, if I don't know someone or if I'm not in a familiar space, that can happen. So for most people, after they get to know me for a little while, It'll see, I'll seem like a totally different person. And I always equated it to shyness uh, because I was like highly shy as a child. 
No, it just may be ADHD. But then, here there is the claim of me being an abuser. Which is a claim that no one can substantiate. No one. And there are a ton of people who witnessed me and her in person. At the worst you could say is that I was indifferent. And indifference doesn't require hate or anger or the desire to hurt. All it requires is disengagement. And that tended to be what happened with me and my wife. I became disinterested in arguing and fighting. So I disengaged from that potential route as much as possible. Which meant that I was, I guess you'd say, disillusioned. So I was highly indifferent. Not in, not with maliciousness in my thoughts. But because I didn't want to fight and argue. Because I preferred to avoid fighting and arguing. Because I preferred avoiding yelling and screaming. And it became stressful. It built up as stress over time. I constantly got told I don't stress. Like, no, I, I, I did stress. I just internalized it. I internalized almost all of my stress. Which was another thing that led to me be, being highly emotionless. I think the only times I was really happy was when my kids were born. Or something special happened. Otherwise, I was very despondent. And now looking back at it, I could pretty much guess that when people looked at me, they didn't see the life in my eyes. They saw a highly animated person. They heard someone who was personable. But they didn't see life in me. Hell, I didn't see life in me even when I looked back at YouTube videos I was making. I looked back at him like, I was so dead on the inside. I was trying to not be. And for people who aren't used to masking, they would see me and be like, wow, he's, he's a little odd, but he's animated, he's moving. And over time, I got a little bit better about being awkward. Still am some. But got a little bit better about it. I mean, <clears throat> I've seen people who were former friends on more than one occasion think of me as abusive. Think of me as someone who wanted to harm my family. And nothing could be further from the truth. And that sucks. That really sucks. But at this point in my life, I am more than willing to let go of friendships with people who, even though I may care about them, they think the worst of me. I will very readily own up to my screw-ups. I will accept them. But will I not, what I will not accept is things people say about me that I have never done. I just won't. And again, I've got enough people to go back and say, you're talking about the wrong person. You are most definitely talking about the wrong person when you say this. And again, that sucks. Do I even have to do that? Because when my ex decided she wanted to divorce, 
I wasn't fighting her on it. In fact, she specifically asked me not to. So I did everything I could to not fight her on it. Even though there was at one point, she was still considering keeping our marriage going. Even though we weren't together, she was considering keeping our marriage going. I know. And, and I do have proof of me asking her how I treated her poorly. And her response being was that I cheated on her. I have proof of that. I have emails for that. Because I know I didn't do that. Because even in my emails I said if I did to you what you did to me, I'd be in jail. This is, as much as people don't actually understand it, there are laws for verbal abuse. They don't get enacted much, but there are laws on it. And I'm pretty sure I suffered through that a lot. Hell, uh, there was actually a running joke on, <laughs> because of me being in gaming YouTube, me pointing out that many people who had a uh, internet beef with some of the people I was associated with never actually had a beef with me directly because they seemed to avoid having that type of conversation with me. And I got told, what was it, uh, battered wife syndrome? Which I guess, yeah, I kind of did have that. Because I was looking for a conflict somewhere to not have a conflict with my, my ex-wife. As sad as it sounds. And the stress did start eventually bleeding out because I started yelling back. I started losing my temper more. I never really like took my temper out on anyone. Outside of potentially yelling, which I felt crappy for. Any instance where my, my temper flared up, I felt like crap. I don't like being angry. I don't like how my body feels when I'm angry. I hate the overabundance of adrenaline I get. Because I feel so fidgety. Like, I can't not move my body when I'm like that. And it's hard to stay still. It's hard to concentrate. It's hard to formulate words and sentences. There's, I can be upset and still be cognizant of everything I'm doing. But if you have me blatantly pissed off, while I am still cognizant internally, externally I am a high level mess. I function just very poorly. Which is hard to get across to a lot of people. So that becomes a thing to itself. That is hard to get people to understand when you're in that mindset, you... It's like almost not existing, but you still exist. But there may be a part two to this. Because I think I've gone on quite a while. And, hell, some of the people that are part of Project Open Mic that have known me for quite a while, this may be new information to you guys. And that is why I kind of had to take a good long break and start focusing on my mental health and trying to work on myself because if I didn't I wouldn't be here and there were multiple times where I felt that I couldn't do it but I'll get back into that later on probably within the next week but for now I hope that this wasn't uh, 
like horrible for some people to hear it's just me getting things off my mind off my chest because I want to be as helpful to people as possible and if I have to kind of display where my weaknesses are in order to do that because I have strengths that are far beyond that then I'll do it so Thank you all for listening. Hope this finds you in good health, mental, physical, and otherwise. And again, I do hope that this helps someone somewhere, some way. Maybe there's a lesson to be learned or a message to be heard. But I'll drop it here. Thank you very much and peace out, everybody.